At Thomas Scott to win adventurers, greetings. I, I beg your indulgence uh, for something that I need to do today. If you've watched any number of the 50 some odd videos I've produced as of now, you're aware that uh, these are, I don't really make videos, I make conversations. And it, yeah, they're very one-sided conversations because obviously you can't reply back. It does help me to uh, do this though. I was a radio announcer when I was younger, and I'm perfectly fine with uh, speaking into a microphone, but there's just something about having a camera pointed at me that just makes it really weird. So today I'm looking at uh, Air Lotus, because he's the best. But uh, anyway, I need to exercise my voice, I need to practice my sight reading, and as long as I have to do those two things, it just made sense that I would sit down and, and uh, do a video for you today, or a conversation for me. And what I wanted to look at was uh, a supplement for the basic fantasy role-playing game. This is uh, Druids. I love Druids. I don't know why exactly I love Druids. I think it's because just fundamentally I, I love nature. A couple of years ago in Ottawa, we had a derecho. It's basically a very small, well, big wind, I guess, but uh, not tornado level, but uh, it's... It's on that scale up, up towards there. In any case, we lost power in the city for two, three weeks, some, some people uh, maybe even longer. And for those two weeks, I was stuck in my backyard, stuck. And uh, it was lovely. I have, uh, I have a big fire pit that, uh, that I enjoy. I have uh, wood that I like to chop. And uh, to be stuck outside in the sunshine and the air and the crows and trees and stuff was uh, far from the worst thing that could have happened to me for, for those two weeks. Cold showers was kind of brutal, but being able to sit around a campfire and cook my own stew and eat uh, bear and beaver and wish that I had some moose to eat, but uh, no such luck. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was amazing. So anyway... I got to commune with nature and try to work as best as I could for those two weeks. But uh, in all honesty, there's not a lot I can do without electricity other than just enjoy myself. So, uh, yeah, there's a very small amount of druid in me somewhere. So I wanted to uh, talk about it as a supplement. And I wish that I um, could have put druids into Chrysogon's Coterie um, to make it compatible universally with the system, the core system, all versions, it was intentionally limited to four classes, four races. Um, but to sneak in some druidism, I uh, I created some clerics and some magic users even that had very distinct inclinations towards um, towards nature to sort of sneak in some of that druid stuff. And uh, yeah, I, we don't have the time to go through those today, but you'll recognize those characters when you see them. Um, one guy who was fascinated with mushrooms, he's a magic user. There was another woman who uh, just had, although she was a magic user, had inclinations towards druidic magic and wanted to see if there were fixtures of the earth, like mountains that held sensory memories that she could uh, yeah, learn from and, and, and touch. Um, mentally. So anyway, it's, it's, it's there very, very purposely there. So let's just read through this. I'll, I'm going to read because I need to exercise my voice, as I said, but, uh, it, it will also just be useful for you. Like if you're lazy, if you like audiobooks as opposed to having to read stuff, I can do the hard work for you and we'll both get something out of this. So druids are a form of specialist cleric under the uh, basic fantasy role-playing game rule system. And that's a free download from basicfantasy.org, should you wish it. And the books are available practically at cost. You know, cost plus a nickel or a quarter. Druids are nature priests, revering the gods of the natural world. Often a druid uses mistletoe as a holy symbol, but this can vary with specific nature deities. Druids spend their time contemplating nature or in mundane forms of service, such as ministering in rural areas. However... There are those who are called to go abroad and serve the natural order in a more direct way by working actively to restore balance. Druids advance at the same rate as clerics, and they use the same combat and saving throw tables. 
Druids can cast spells of divine nature starting at second level, and they have the power of animal affinity, detailed at the end of the supplement, working much like the clerical ability to turn undead. They can identify any natural animal or plant and can identify clean water. The prime requisite for Druid is wisdom. A character must have a wisdom score of nine or higher to become a Druid. Druids may not utilize metal armor of any type, and they are likewise limited to wooden shields. Druids utilize any one-handed melee weapon as well as staff, sling, and short bow. And then here's a list of the spells. Spells that are in bold are, are specific to the druid uh, class and to this supplement. And spells with an asterisk are reversible. That's normal. So I'm not going to go through and read all the spells because that would be quite a bit in itself. But we can just go and look. Um, animal Friendship. Detect Snares and Pits and Tangle and Fairy Fire. Those are the first level. Oh, and Pass Without Trace. Those are all the new, uh, specifically druidic spells for first level. Second level, we have Heat Metal, Obscuring Mists, Produce Flame or Cold, Slow Potion, and Warp Wood. Third level, Assume Animal Form, Call Lightning, Hold Animal, Plant Growth, Protection from Fire. Fourth level, Call Woodland Beings, Control Temperature, 10-foot Radius, Protection from Lightning, Speak with plants. Summon animals. One. Tree sanctuary. Fifth level. Commune with nature. Control winds. Flame strike. Rock to mud. Summon animals. Two. And sixth level. Animate natural objects. Part water. Pass tree. Summon animals. Three. And weather summoning. So. And those are all fully detailed in here. Let's talk about animal affinity, which yeah was mentioned earlier. Druids have the animal affinity, affinity ability. See, this is what I'm practicing. Sight reading, it's important. It's good for music. It's also good for, for people that do voice work, as I do. Druids have the animal affinity ability, which is the ability to calm or befriend normal animals. The druid attempts to communicate a benign intent, and through his or her connection to the natural world, the animals affected may either be calmed or befriended. The player rolls 1d20 and tells the GM the result. Note that the player should always roll, even if the GM knows that the character cannot succeed or can't fail, as telling the player whether or not to roll may reveal too much. The GM looks up the druid's table uh, level on the druid's animal affinity table below and cross-references it with the animal's hit dice. Tame or normally domesticated animals such as livestock, family pets, or normal beasts of burden are treated as half their actual hit dice, reflecting their relative easy manageability. Monstrous animals such as griffins, owl bears, pegasi, or other such near natural creatures are treated as if they are one hit dice more than listed to reflect their unique natures. If the table indicates no for that combination, it's not possible for the druid to affect that type of animal. If the table gives a number, that is the maximum, sorry, that is the minimum number needed on the 1d20 to calm that sort of animal. If the table says C for that combination, that type of animal is automatically affected. If the result shown is a B for that combination, that type of animal is automatically befriended. If the roll is a success, 2d6 hit dice of animals are affected. Surplus hit dice are lost, but at least one animal is always affected if the first roll is a success. If a mixed group of animals, say a boar and a black bear, is to be affected, the player still rolls just once. The result is checked against the weakest sort, first, the boar, and if they are successfully calmed or befriended, the same result is checked against the next higher type of animal. Likewise, the 2d6 hit dice are rolled only once. For example, if the group described above is to be affected by a second level druid, he or she would be first need to have rolled a 15 or higher to calm the boar. If this is a success, two CDs. Okay. If this is a success, 2d6 are rolled, assuming the 2d6 roll is a 6. This would calm the boar and leave a remainder of four hit dice of effect. 
Black bears are, in fact, four hit dice animals. So assuming the original 1d20 roll was a 20, the black bear is calmed as well. Obviously, if it were a group of two boars and a black bear, the 2d6 would have to be a total of eight or higher to affect them all. If a druid succeeds at calming or befriending, befriending the animals, but not all animals present are affected, he or she may try again in the next round to affect those which remain. Any role to calm or befriend the animals fails, if any role, that that druid may not attempt to use his or her animal affinity ability again for one full turn. A partial failure, which is possible against a mixed group, counts as a failure for that purpose. And now we introduce some new magic items. Ring of the Green. When worn, the vines will writhe and grow into the wearer's fingers painlessly. It takes a full week for the ring to fully bond with the wearer, but once so doing, the ring provides two benefits. As long as the wearer is outdoors for a full hour of sunlight or two full hours of overcast weather, the weather wearer does not need to eat or drink anything. Second is that for each hour of complete rest in the outdoors, it's equivalent to four hours of sleep. So that's interesting. Ring of the Dryad. When worn, the user is able to manifest the effects of a tree sanctuary or spell once per day. Slippers of the Dryad. When wearing these slippers, the wearer is under the continual effects of a Pass Without Trace spell. Okay. The Staff of the Woodlands operates as a plus two staff with continual effects of Pass Without Trace and several other abilities that uh, cost charges with one cost per charge per use. Charm animal, speak with animals, and hold animal. Uh, that's one charge. Summon animals to an animate natural object cost two charges. Sword of the Sylvan. It's a magic uh, plus one weapon, a curved single-edged single edged sword. When used outdoors, it becomes a plus three magic weapon. Oh, okay, that's neat. Okay. So there's a couple more. I'll leave it to you to finish. Some instructions on making magic items, which is something that druids of seventh level and higher they can make potions as a cleric, and druids of ninth level and higher may make the items listed here, plus any others that the GM feels is appropriate. Is that it? Oh my goodness. All right. So, yeah, that was short and sweet. Anyway, I did get a bit of a workout of my voice, not as much as, uh, well, yeah, I'm not going to reread the spells. In any case, I love druids. I don't, don't even know why. I think when I was young and I really didn't think very deeply about uh, about character classes beyond my own, which was a magic user at the time, I, uh, I didn't really give too much thought to them. But as an older player, especially in the last four years, as I've watched people that know how to be very skillful druids <laughs> and, and uh, just how, how powerful these abilities are for a person that really knows how to use them correctly and how beneficial that is to a party... Yeah, I've developed a lot of respect for, for Druids since. Yeah, which is why I tried to worm them into my into my book. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you for hanging around. Until next time. Kikichi no Nasko Thank you. I'm grateful for you. Until next time.